Hello everyone. Welcome to yet another session on SQL. In this session, we will look at uh, various ranking function that SQL provides us. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fire up SSMS and um, let's take a table, say person dot address. So you know in your day to day uh, data activities, you might need that certain amount of data may be you know, needed to rank it in a specific way for which SQL provides us a couple of functions using which we can rank some data into, you know, whatever format we need. So um, let me just take a very simple example. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose a couple of postal codes over here and, you know, rank them. So let me just um, see what all postal codes do we have. Okay, so let me just randomly choose about two or three postal codes. So I'm going to save our postal code in 98052, that should be Redmond, 98027, and 98055. So here we have some data to play with. So um, it's not, I mean, there, there is a certain amount of reputation over here and that's the whole idea. And we're going to see how we're going to rank them. So first thing what I wanted to show you is the row number function. Basically as the name suggests, it's just going to assign a row number for each of the data. And what you need to do is row number is the inbuilt function and after which you need to give the criteria by which you know it has to be ordered. So I'm going to say order by postal code. And I'm going to call this column as row number. Let's try executing this. It is. So here, as the name suggests, it, it's just randomly, not randomly actually, sequentially assigned the row numbers. And um, it's, it's pretty much like an inbuilt function and then you know you can use it however you want. Um, the second one that I wanted to show you is the rank function and the syntax is again the same. You uh, mentioned the rank function and after which you need to give the criteria. Here again I'm going to order by postal code and I'm going to call this as rank. So as you can see that you know for all identical data it has assigned the same rank. However when you see that when it jumps to 98052 instead of assigning a rank 2 it's going to assign the next rank that is 121 because for the first 120 rows it has already assigned rank number one so it's not going to use two or three but directly jump to 121 so you see that there are gaps in ranks over here so however if you don't want this kind of situations there is an inbuilt function called dense rank and again the method is the same that you need to give a criteria so I'm going to just say order by postal code and I'm going to call this as dense rank so if I execute this you see that after 120 it's going to give it a rank 2 so all data which has been repeated is you know has a rank 2 and then it will jump to rank 3 so here you see that there are absolutely no gaps in ranks and whereas in the first case we saw that there are gaps in the ranks that are located. The next function that I wanted to show you was the entile. So entile is basically um, you know putting these data into different buckets so you know how many groups do you want to put it in that's what we mentioned in in the entire function so I'm going to just create 10 groups and again the other syntax remains the same. So I'm just going to say that whatever data I'm having, just put it into 10 groups and rank them accordingly. So I'm going to just say entire. And if I run this, you see that you know it has equally divided the total data into 10 groups and automatically assigned ranks to them. So at times these types of functions are pretty much helpful, and you know these are the main four functions which which is like kind of used in. Um, you know, day-to-day -day data interaction. Thank you.